Hi everyone, welcome back to one more listening video. Today's listening video is based on real exam. Our target score for today is 28. We have more practice paper in form of ebook in all the materials. So if you are interested to buy books, please click on the below link in the comment section and please subscribe to our channel. If you have any suggestions for us, please let us know in the comment section. Thank you. Stay tuned. Part 1. You will hear a conversation about accommodation rules. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 3. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 3. Good morning everyone. I'm your accommodation advisor. Well, firstly, welcome to Thomas House, which is one of the most popular accommodations in our university. I will give you an introduction about the house and answer your questions. As you know, the building was constructed in the middle of the 18th century and was used by the family of Thomas. That's of course how the house and university got its name. We repaired it and added some new and modern facilities last year. Excuse me, advisor? Yes? What kind of facilities are there in Thomas House? There are three floors, a front hall and a dining room are on the ground floor. Does the house have a garden? Of course. And a garage? No, we don't provide parking lot to students. OK. A small gym with some new equipment is on the second floor. Does it have a computer room? No, I mean a leisure room on the second floor and you can find a comfortable lounge with a big balcony on the same floor. How about bedroom and bathroom? They are both on the top. How many students are there in one flat? Four to six. I wonder if I have to share a bathroom with others. No, we provide every student a bedroom and a bathroom. Great. Now, look at questions four to ten. Now listen carefully and answer questions 4 to 10. There are some rules in Thomas House. Firstly, smoking is not allowed in both your bedroom and the bathroom. Does the house have a smoking section? No, you can smoke on the balcony or outside the house. Advisor, is there a laundry in the house? Of course. Laundry room is located on the right corner of the second floor. Sure. But please do not use it after 11 o'clock. Is it free to us? In fact, you don't need to pay any bills which are included in your accommodation fee. But you have to pay laundry fee. How much? We offer two coin-operated washing machines. The large one is £2.50 and the small one is £1.60. If the lounge has a time restriction? Definitely. We ask all students to keep quiet and do not make noise after 11 o'clock. We know there is a backyard in the house. Yes. If we can park our car there? No, 
We do not allow parking in our yard. Okay. Could we invite some friends to hold a party in the garden or lounge? We only allow party on weekends. Fine. The last rule is to pay attention to the opening time of the front hall. The door is locked at 11 p.m. and opened again at 6 a.m. in the next morning. Remember to take the front door key when you go out early or come back late. How could we get the front door key? You can go to residence office building and get your key in room 101. Sure. Well, any questions? That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear an introduction about sports matches. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 17. Good morning everyone. I'm Mary White, the secretary of the Exciting Sports Club. Welcome to attend matches arrangement meeting. I know you are looking forward to a great season. Now, I'd like to give you a short introduction to our arrangement in this season. This season, we still have two competitions. One is tennis and the other is soccer. Let's start with tennis. There will be six teams competition. We hope the players' ages are between 16 and 22 years old. While the number of soccer teams is only four in this season, because we hope all players' ages are no more than 20 years old. Now, in this new season there are some changes. The first one is the venue. We will arrange all our matches for both the tennis and soccer competitions in Magic Park instead of Darry Park, which was used last year. Tennis matches will be arranged on Court 2 and Court 4. We'll hold soccer matches. Our match schedule all tennis matches will be played on Sunday afternoons. All matches will begin at 2 o'clock. Soccer matches in this season will be played at 7 o'clock on Saturday evenings. The joining fee is still £30, including a new sport gear. We still offer a week of training session before formal match for our new players. There are two training sessions at 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. on next Friday and Saturday afternoon. The fee is only £12. Now, I'd like to introduce the coach of our each training session, George Hansen, who has been supervised the tennis team for over four years, will still be coach this season. While we will invite a good soccer coach, who has enough patience and professional skills to work as this season soccer coach. His name is Paul Butt. Now, look at questions 18 to 20.
Now, listen carefully and answer questions 18 to 20. In addition, we offer some activities to thank all players. Please look at your brochure. There are some activities and their time arrangements. At the beginning, we hope to start the season with a barbecue dinner on next Saturday in Magic Park. I do really hope all players will go there to enjoy the dinner and you may invite your relatives and friends. Of course they have to pay a little fee with just £5. And then, after the final match in the season, we will vote this season's MVP, the most valuable player. The two players from tennis team and soccer team will gain an honour and a prize from our sports centre. This season we hope all players can send a confirm letter to us to ensure our match arrangement. So please write to us before the deadline. It is on Thursday 18th of April. Our secretary, David Black, is in charge of collecting fees and your letters in this season. His room number is 214 and his phone is 332567. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation about a student thesis. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Come in please. Good afternoon. Oh, I am sorry. Is it Professor Lee's office room? No, it is room 640. His new room number is 614 on the right of this corridor. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Come in, please. Good afternoon, Professor Lee. Good afternoon. Come in, please. I remember our tutorial time is at two o'clock, right? Really? Oh, I am so sorry. I remember it is at half past one. So I... I go to common room to wait for 30 minutes, OK? No, no. I'm free now. Let's begin. I am so sorry. That doesn't matter. So, how about your work? In fact, Professor Lee, can I get an extension of time to hand in my work? I mean, I hope to extend my thesis deadline. James, you know extension is usually given only for medical or accident reasons. So what's your problem? You have a good beginning with your draft, isn't it right? Yes, while I... I'm having too many reading materials to read. Too many? How many? Besides academic journals, I have about 15 books to read next month. I don't think I can finish them. Oh, darling, you do not need to read them all. What do you mean? I mean, you can choose some parts of these books which can help your work. Really? Could you give me some suggestions? Sure. Now look at questions 25 to 30.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 25 to 30. Do you bring your reference book list? Yes, I take it. Let's see. First, the book by Bayer. I think it is really worth reading. Read it all? Yes. The topic of the book is nearly the same field with you. OK. I'll read Bayer's book. The next author is Oliver. I heard that his argument is very strong, but the book is a little difficult. You are right, but I still recommend you to know about his argument, which will give you a lot of help. Fine. Do you think I should read Billy's book? About Billy. I have to say his work is very good, especially his research method, but you do not need to read it now. Right. The last author is Andrew. How about his book? In my opinion, the one by Andrew says the research findings. I mean, his last part is very excellent, clear and persuasive. I agree with you. I'm reading the book now. Great. How about others? I suggest you finish these books next month and then we will talk about others, OK? OK. Have you begun your research work? Yes. How are things going? That's OK, except the research method. What's wrong with the method? I have made some interviews. Yes. But I found they couldn't give me the data I need. Who are the interviewees? Some are our classmates and others are schoolmates. Oh no. James, it's better for you to interview some professionals. Do you think it is better for me to change another research method, such as questionnaire? I don't think you will have enough time to design it and then analyse your research data. That will waste you a lot of time. You're right. And pay attention to your reference. Reference books? No, I mean you should make clearly about what reference books you read and then write them after your thesis. OK, I'll make them clear. Fine. I hope to see your work quickly. I hope too. Thanks for your help, Professor Lee. That's OK. See you next time. See you. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a conversation about astronomy. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. This is Magic Time from the BBC. I am Faith. In today's programme, we invite a professor of astronomy. Welcome, Lewis. Thanks a lot, Faith. What magic information will you introduce to us? We all know the Leonidists in August are coming, so today let's talk about meteors. Good topic. At one time or another, almost everyone has glimpsed a swift little streak of light dashing across the night sky. Nearly everyone makes wishes when they see them and blame both good and bad luck on their presence. Yes, these sudden celestial visitors are meteors. We often call it shooting star. The glowing trails are caused by the incineration of a piece of celestial debris entering our atmosphere. Many meteors are quick flashes, 
but some last long enough for us to track their brief course across the sky. Right. Now and then, a meteor truly will light up the night, blazing brighter than Venus, although rarely, even brighter than the moon, leaving in its wake a dimly glowing trail that may persist for minutes. Lewis, can we see some meteors every night in one year? Yes. Under a dark sky, any observer can expect to see between two and seven meteors each hour, any night of the year. These are sporadic meteors. Sporadic meteors? Yes. Their source bodies, meteorids, are part of the dusty background of the inner solar system. Several times during the year, Earth encounters swarms of small particles that greatly increase the number of meteors. The result is a meteor shower during which observers may see dozens of meteors every hour. Concentrations of material within the swarms may produce better than average displays in some years, with rates of hundreds per hour, and were treated to a truly amazing display in which thousands of visible meteors can be seen for a brief period. The phenomenon is called meteor storms, which are more magnificent than meteor showers. Aha! That's wonderful! Definitely. The meteors that appear during a meteor shower seem to come from one point in the sky. This illusion is an effect of perspective, just as a roadway seems to converge in the distance. Usually, meteor showers get the name of the constellation from which the meteors appear to radiate. Such as during the Perseid shower in August, meteors seem to streak from a point in the constellation Perseus. When is the biggest meteor storm? According to records, in 1833, a storm of 60,000 meteors an hour shocked the world. 60,000? That's unbelievable! By the 1860s, scientists had known that many meteor showers were annual, including the normally placid Leonids, which produced the big storm, and that they were somehow related to comets. Really? Yes but most of the meteors people have seen during one of the annual showers arise from fluffy particles not much larger than sand grains. As a particle enters Earth's atmosphere, it collides with gas atoms and molecules. The particle becomes wrapped in a glowing sheaf of heated air and vaporized material boiled off its own surface. Whether meteor is very near to us when it appears? No. In fact, it is an illusion. However, even well-trained professionals can be fooled, such as airline pilots have swerved to avoid meteors that were actually 160 kilometers away. A meteor that appears brighter than any of the stars and planets is a fireball. Fireball? That's so interesting. Yeah. Most meteors are seen 80 to 120 kilometers above the ground. Sometimes, someone will claim to see a fireball land on a hilltop. But in fact, a real fireball first appears at a height of about 125 kilometers and loses its brightness while still at least 20 kilometers above the ground. Yes. What colors do meteors have? Usually, most meteors look white, but some also appear blue, green, yellow, orange, or even red. What will happen if a meteoroid gets to the surface of the Earth without being completely vaporized? It will be a meteorite. I heard meteorites were long ago thought to be cast down as gifts from angels. Yes, and others thought the gods were displaying their anger. Really? As late as the 17th century, many believed they fell from thunderstorms. They were nicknamed Thunderstones. Many scientists didn't believe the accounts of people who claimed to have seen meteors, and some experts were sceptical that stones could fall from the clouds or the heaven. Yes. One of the most significant meteorite events in recent history destroyed hundreds of square miles of forest in Siberia on June the 30th, 1908. According to local witnesses, a ball of fire streaked through the sky and seemed to enter the atmosphere at an oblique angle. It exploded, 
sending out hot winds and loud noises, and shaking the ground enough to break windows in nearby villages. Small particles blown into the atmosphere lit the night sky for several days. So nowadays, the prevailing theory holds that a meteor exploded just above the surface. Yes, most impact craters and basins larger than the meteor crater are heavily worn away, or have been buried by rocks and dirt as the Earth's surface changed. At present, Chicxulub Basin, centered in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, is the largest one. The diameter of basin is around 300 kilometers. Rock samples obtained by drilling into the basin show that an asteroid struck the Earth there about 65 million years ago. Does that the same period with the dinosaurs disappeared? That's right. Many scientists believe this debris caused climate changes, which made the dinosaurs not survive. We do really hope that will never happen again. Right. Okay. Thanks for watching today's program. See you next week. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.